Stay tuned for exclusive content from the Written Sins Network. For those who haven't seen that, that's the official opening to the Netflix Luke Cage Netflix show. Now, I'm going to be doing a review of it, and I know it's not an indie comic, but wait till the end and you'll understand why. First, as far as Netflix goes with Marvel, they're just nailing it out of the, you know, I mean, they're like knocking it out of the park with the way that they're handling the quality and the stories themselves are very well written. And Luke Cage by far is the best, hands down. It's got no drag, no episodes that I like to call stall episodes, where it seems like they're just trying to hit that episode mark that they aim for at the beginning of the year. And they have to hit 13, so they're going to have to slow down two episodes to make it. This show never suffered from that. It was constant. It kept moving. You almost could not stop watching it. You know, if if I didn't have my, my son, I probably would have literally watched it in one sitting. But it took me a few days. Now, I think it was well acted. I think the acting staff in it was amazing. I honestly thought it hit the feel of New York and and more of the uh, the Harlem vibe than I've seen in most things that I've ever been filmed aside from something from Spike Lee. It had a real feel to it. It felt genuine. Uh, genuine. Uh, I do think this was the best Netflix has offered us so far. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up and doing a review today is not only because I was a fan, but the reason it's making the site is here's the promotional poster for it. And throughout most of the episodes, he walks around in a hood. Now, this is something from Victor Dandridge Jr., who is a good friend of mine, and I, I've known him for a couple of years. He's a great creator. You got to check out his stuff, Advantage. And... I mean, this has got to be somehow connected to Victor, the new way that Luke Cage is. I mean, the feel of it's nothing like the comics I knew Power Man to be, or Luke Cage to be. He's way more grittier. It almost sounds like, I mean, I'm not even going to say almost. It's definitely a direct reference to what Victor did. And as a matter of fact, I think Marvel should at least reach out to him and thank him. If they're not going to give him money, but thank him for, you know, inspiring a more honest uh, character to represent Harlem and to re represent inner city. Because I think Victor nailed it, and I think they took a lot of what Victor did. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not saying they stole it. I'm saying that they read it, and it influenced them. I think that's the nicest way to put it. I think... This read more like The Samaritan to me as a show than it did anything I knew Luke Cage to be. And I've known him for years in the comic books, from the silly outfits to the more recent in endeavors they've had with him. And they might change him going forward to make him more Marvel-like, but this series was more Victor-like. And I gotta give Mr. Dandridge his credit. This show was definitely influenced by what he did on The Samaritan. I know Luke Cage came first. Uh, I feel like the Samaritan stands alone from Luke Cage. I don't feel like they were intertwined until Marvel intertwined them. It's nothing against Marvel. Uh, we all get inspired by things. We all get influenced by things. I think this is just a case of being influenced by it. And I think Marvel at one point does try to give him the credit for it by hitting an Easter egg in there. That's in the second episode where they refer to him as a hooded uh, vigilante. And there's a couple other parts where, I'm sorry, it, it feels like it's Victor's comic. So, that's it. This is my review of Luke Cage's Netflix. I will watch season two. And uh, maybe they'll actually invite Victor to uh, participate in it, considering the big inspiration he obviously had in it. But that's it for now. I will talk to you guys soon. Stay tuned for exclusive content from the Written Sins Network.